This episode is brought to you by Battleborn Batteries, the best name in the RV and marine industry. These lithium batteries are designed and assembled in the USA, backed by a 10-year warranty. The best solution for your battery anxiety. So go check them out at BattlebornBatteries.com. Whether your adventure is on the road, on the water, or off the grid, Battleborn Batteries keep you out there longer. You are listening to Beyond the Wheel, a podcast about the people and ideas that drive the RV community forward. Welcome back, everyone. On today's episode, we're going to talk with Don Brady of RV Toll Pass. As you will hear, there is finally a solution to having multiple transponders in your windshield. Listen to the episode and learn about this solution to any toll road worries. Hi, Don. Thank you for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at RV Toll Pass? Sure. I'm a vice president of business development for Transcor. Transcor is a major provider of toll road uh, infrastructure, uh, transponders, traffic management systems in the U.S. About 60% uh, of, of that infrastructure is provided by Transcor in the U.S., I work out of our Albuquerque office where we have a major manufacturing facility. Actually, we're the only toll road company in the U.S. that designs and manufactures our, our own equipment uh, exclusively. So it's made in the USA, basically, even though we have some foreign components. RV Toll Pass is a program that we started out of Albuquerque. It, it, it's based on a transponder that we created that has multiple protocols. In the U.S., there's five different uh, types of technology that's used in the toll roads around the, around the country. And this transponder in one box allows you to use all those protocols. Typically, if you're using a toll road, you just use one transponder for that agency. So this unique product, and we feel it's a natural market for our viewers because they travel cross country and travel between agencies. That's sort of the genesis of RV Toll Pass. It's been approved by all the major agencies. It's a unique product that uh, we're offering to the RV community. And, and how long has RV Toll Pass been up and running? We just launched late last year. So we, between coronavirus and coming in right in the middle of the, uh, the snowbird season, we're, we're uh, looking to uh, get some traction this year. So it's, it's a brand new product basically uh, for the community. So we're happy to, uh, get the word out on it. Right now, actually, uh, Newmar Corporation, uh, one of the major builders of luxury motorhomes, is installing these in their vehicles in the factory. You know, we've talked to a lot of product people over the couple of years we've been doing this, and it's always difficult to get a manufacturer to put something extra. They must have really been pleased with, with the product. Yes, yes. And we're happy to have them uh, as a partner and th- and they see the value, especially uh, in their high-end RVs, because uh, as you guys are aware, a lot of people that have those big RVs are ones that travel on the road a lot and through various toll agencies across country. So yes, it's a, it's a great partnership for us and, and we're very pleased about it. And we're seeking others. And so we expect to actually have our device placed in others and maybe have a partnership we're working with a uh, with some of the major uh, uh, travel trailer people as well. I think you guys are actually hitting the market at a good time. You know, COVID has affected a lot of travel, but it seems to be affecting RV in the opposite way. More people seem to be more interested in RVing right now, I believe, than ever before. KOA recently did a, an article that they're seeing a 30% increase uh, coming of interest anyway for people to come visit their campgrounds. And sadly, that's a positive. But interestingly enough, that is a side benefit for RV Toll Pass because it allows you to bypass the uh, the toll booth, so you don't have to interact with the toll collector or handle cash. You can just bypass. So it does have a, a social distancing aspect as well. <laughs> in, in times, as far as the actual part or piece, the the actual toll transponder, I guess is what it's called. How you said it has all five um, what it, protocols. Protocols, protocols built into it. Yes. So is it a large device? Is it a small? How exactly does it work? 
Well, anyone that uh, has, has used the toll road, for instance, if you use Easy Pass or others, the RV toll pass transponder looks similar to an Easy Pass uh, hard case transponder. It's about the size of a small cell phone, and it mounts on the windshield using a hook and loop or Velcro. It's easy to install. It's it's very similar to any other transponder that you uh, you would put on your car for for toll activity. You had mentioned that Newmar will be having this pre-installed into their RV. Will it be the same transponder, or are they kind of making it incognito some way? That's a good question. So what we the aftermarket transponder is battery powered. Nominal life is five years. Uh, depending on use, it could go much longer than that. On the Newmar vehicles, we have a version that actually is hardwired into the electrical system on the on the vehicle. So oh, those are wow. different. Yeah, those are different from what you would get as an aftermarket device. That was yeah. one of my questions too. You just answered one of my future questions was uh, how, how, what's the life expectancy of a transponder if you're installing it yourself? Five years is a long time. That's really good. Yeah. It, yeah. That, and again, uh, it's designed to, uh, you know, you, you're not, most people are not on the road full time and are not mm -hmm. traveling on toll roads full time. So the life expectancy for many people in the RV community is probably going to be longer than that. So for anybody that's maybe never gone through a toll using a transponder, it is very easy. My wife and I do it all the time. I'm from Philadelphia originally, Philadelphia Turnpike. If anybody's from that area, you'll know. So when you have the transponder, there is, like you said, there is no touch. You just slow down. Some sections of the country now don't even make you slow down. You can go full speed through. For the most part, I guess you still kind of just slow down through that toll booth area. There's no stopping. There's no interaction with anybody. You just get to roll right through and uh, keep on trucking along. It is a great system. Well, as, as you know, if you're driving an RV and you're, you're driving in an area you're not familiar with and you approach a toll road, many people don't know what to do. Do I have to stop? Do I have to get in that long line? It, 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 it really creates, it actually can be dangerous, including driving through a, a narrow toll booth lane and ripping your mirror off. That's one of the most common repairs in the RV communities. <laughs> I used to have an RV. I, I'm not saying I tore a mirror off or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear it's happened before. <laughs> it takes away a lot of that, that guesswork because you can use the electronic bypass lane. The other benefit, of course, is that if you use the cash lane, the price is typically twice as much as using uh -huh. the electronic lane. So the toll authorities are encourage people to use the electronic lane so they don't have to in incur incur that. We'll talk a little bit later, I, I presume, how you sign up for it and, and, uh, and all those details. And, and it, I'll talk to you about also using registering your license plate. So at, at the end of the day, it's convenient. It, it really pays for itself if you go on a, on a trip interagency uh, just by using the uh, electronic rates rather than the cash rates. I will mention that there is a service fee, administrative service fee for it. It's $14.99 a month to allow the account to be managed We'll talk later about how all the tolls are consolidated by our by our administrative side. But at $14.99, you only have to pay it, though, in months where you incur tolls. So, again, this is designed for RVers. Uh, maybe not necessarily someone who's on the road full time. You, you might be incurring tolls year round. But most people, uh, it's a few months a year, a couple of months a year when they when they do a lot of traveling and vacationing. So it's designed also for the uh, service to be charged only in the months where you actually incur tolls. Oh, I like that. That's a good idea to not have. So it's not costing somebody that is traveling over to summer through the winter when you're not using it, you're not being charged for it. That's a great system. That's exactly right. And, it, and it's also designed for out of area travel, because if you, you live in uh, Pennsylvania, you live in the Philadelphia area, you're going to have an easy pass transponder and you'll get all the discounts. You live in New York, you'll get discounts. You'll, you'll use that transponder. You wouldn't want to pay the $14.99 a month, even though this transponder would work in that area. You would use this only when you travel out of area. And we can talk a little bit later about how you put this up, take down your other transponder and, and how you manage that. But anyhow, it's designed for out of area and to, to complement your existing transponder and, and, and toll lash up that you have. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the actually the back end and how the toll the let's say you go through an easy pass or a sun pass or the one in texas i don't even remember what that one's called how does that communication occur so that you guys at rv toll pass and transcore know that we went through that toll and then the billing occurs and all that that's that's a that's a great question i'll just explain how, how the system works 
So we have the transponder, which is uh, multi-protocol. We use a toll consolidator, best pass out of Albany, New York. Their main business is providing toll consolidation services to uh, long haul truckers that travel throughout the country. So they have agreements with all the agencies across the US. So when your transponder gets read in California, Texas, Florida, all that information comes to them, it goes on your account. So you have one account with them, they manage the whole thing and you pay one bill for all the tolls. And the nice thing is you also register your license plate at the same time you register your transponder. Because there's some places like Colorado where the transponder won't work, but they use video tolling. And if you're not registered in their system, you get charged an extra amount because video tolling requires a human interaction. But Best Pass has set up agreements with them. So if there's a video toll through their system, you get a preferred rate. So between the transponder and, and the video tolling, Best Pass accommodates all that. So you sign up with them, you have one account and you get a monthly statement and you avoid a lot of the extra charges you might get if you sign up. Because if you're gonna travel cross country, as you guys know, you'd have to sign up and have an account with each agency around the country. You'd have to provide a deposit. There's a small $50 deposit with, uh, with uh, Best Pass for RV Toll Pass, but you have to do it with every agency and you'd have to manage billing coming in from all those. So it, it, it's almost a nightmare if you, you're traveling uh, interagency. And RV Toll Pass takes all that worry out and is super convenient in that regard. Yeah, it's cool that they also do the toll by plate. My wife and I were in Texas. Uh, we were at an RV park in Texas, and she wanted to go to Ikea for something. And we weren't familiar with the area. And she ended up going on a toll by plate road. And it costs a pretty penny when your plate's not registered. It does because they have to have a, a person then look up your license plate and then and then send the bill to you. Interestingly enough, of course, when I say RV toll passes for RVers, it's it's for motorhomes, but it's also for people that tow trailers. I think that's important to mention. So you put it on your tow vehicle. The way the tolling agencies work is they count your axles automatically. So if you're towing a trailer and you've got uh, six axles or four axles, they'll count those and they'll just bill you accordingly. But say you drop your trailer off, just like you used your RV, but you say you drop your trailer off at a trailer park and you're driving around. Well, you can also use your RV toll pass and you'll get the local billing rate using your RV toll pass transponder. And you won't get stuck with a video tolling rate. That's kind of a side benefit if you have a trailer, but if you also have a class B RV and you're driving it around, you also uh, will be able to use RV toll pass and avoid those, those extra charges. So then if you have a uh, class A like I do and I'm, I'm towing my car, can I take the transponder out of the motorhome and put it in the car and, and use the car? Yes, you can. Okay. You can, you can, you can do that. You'll get billed based on axle count, but there, it could be problematic. I mean, uh, the transponders have a code in them. There's three different versions of it. One for a two axle RV, one for three axle RV, and one for a tow vehicle, which would be two axle, like a pickup or SUV. Typically, as I said, the agencies will count your axles and they'll bill you that way. If their system is down, you might get a different rate. If you're driving a, your car that you tow behind and you use your RV, your Class A RV uh, tag, if, if their system is down, if their axle counting system is not working, you'd get billed at the, your RV rate rather than the, uh, than the vehicle rate. But typically, yes, you can, you, can move these, you can move these around. You just have to register that vehicle into the system when you register. I wanted to go back a little bit to uh, what you said, Don, about going through the toll booths where they use the video cameras only. You might know this number or know this percentage. How many areas, because it seems like it's happening more and more for my wife and I as we travel, how many areas and states are going to all automated toll booth areas where there is no person anymore and you pull up to a section of a toll road and you want to get off and there's no person to pay cash like your only option is a transponder that's right almost all the toll authorities are going to uh, cashless tolling uh, i mean it's an overhead expense as you can appreciate to have a to pay for a toll booth operator now i, I just read that uh, pennsylvania is still going to have a uh, man toll booths but the idea is to push people to cashless tolling the incentive of course is it's if you have a transponder it's less expensive to use the, the cash free lane so 
the industry is moving almost exclusively to no human interaction to, to cashless tolling. But you're going to have areas that there's like 35 states that have the tolling. So you're going to have a, a mix and some of them are still going to be that way. And there are, we say at RV Toll Pass works on 95 to 98% of the toll roads across the U.S., all major toll roads, but there are smaller toll roads in, in like in Louisiana, there's a road that goes down to the, uh, the ocean to handle uh, the oil business. And there's small bridges or other small toll roads, private toll roads that you might have to actually stop and pay cash. But uh, typically you can use this bypass with an RV toll pass, or you'll get, the, they'll shoot a video of you and uh, Best Pass will handle that, and give you a discounted rate for that. And how does a customer know which toll roads they cannot use the RV toll pass on? Well, that's, that's another good question. If you go to our website, www.rvtollpass.com, there's a series of frequently asked questions, and there's also a list of the, of the toll roads where RV toll pass works, and uh, those where uh, it, it doesn't work. Uh, so you can go in there and review that. They're pretty much one-offs. They're really off the beaten path. You have to you have to really look hard to find the one. You're not going to be able to use it, but you can go to the website, and that'll give you that information. I'll put a link in our show notes for your website so that people can just jump right over to it from from this episode. Sure, that's important because uh, it, they have to go to rvtollpass.com to actually acquire one of the devices and and, and get the process started. Our, our current distributor for them is uh, for RV Toll Pass is Westco Distributors, and there's a, a link on there, a button that allows you to order RV Toll Pass from them. We're actually going to be on Amazon, hopefully uh, within the next couple of weeks, so that you'll be able to order from two different spots, either uh, through our website or from Amazon to get the process started. The website also uh, has links to to Best Pass. Once you get your transponder, it, it allows you, you can go to link to Best Pass to set up your account. Get all that all that squared away as well. So the website is an important portal for for the program. I'm sure this doesn't happen very much, but if the transponder malfunctions or something and it doesn't get read at the toll system, how does that work? That's an advantage of having Best Pass. Best Pass handles a lot of that for the truckers, and so they have a customer service center. All customer service will run through them. So if there's a question, you look at your account and say, well. I shouldn't have been charged this uh, extra amount. Uh, I had my transponder was functioning, whatever whatever the reason. Mm -hmm. uh, Best Pass actually will help resolve those type of questions. Oh, because okay. there are times when a, a toll lane, uh, perhaps the uh, the reader is down, right? That it's no no fault of yours that it didn't get read. Say video told you instead. And those those kind of disputes uh, can be worked with Best Pass. So that's an advantage of having them. They do it all the time and they've got a huge customer service uh, center that handles that kind of stuff. Kenny and I were wondering before we started recording about if over the road truck drivers could use this same device, but it sounds like they have a similar device um, that's designed specifically for them. Yes, we, we provide those as well. And yeah, they have a variety of devices in their truck. Some of them have a common, some of them have more than one transponder. Not all of them have a multi-protocol transponder like this because there are, there are bridges, international bridges use their own, uh, their own special uh, devices to get across. Typically they'll have one of our transponders or maybe two transponders in their vehicle to, to handle all this. But again, Best Pass handles all that. One thing that I'd like to bring up so I don't forget is how do you avoid double billing? If you have an Easy Pass transponder or you have a sticker tag transponder from down in Texas, how do you avoid that? Well, for Easy Pass, their transponders are stuck on the windshield with, with hook and loop. So when you get your RV toll pass, it comes in a little bag, a little silver bag that uh, prevents uh, electronic leakage. So it can't, it can't be read if it's in the bag or any transponder can't be read. So you take down your easy pass transponder if you're going out of area, put it in the bag, put it in your glove box and put your RV toll pass up. That way only your RV toll pass will get read once you move out of your area. If you got a sticker tag, which you're probably familiar with, you guys are probably familiar with them. Uh, they're pretty prevalent down south. They're, they're permanently affixed to your windshield. 
So when you get your RV toll pass, it comes with a small aluminum shield. It's about oh, three and a half by three and a half inches that has hook and loop on it. You place that over your sticker tag and that will prevent it from uh, being read. And then you install your RV toll pass. So you have to use a tag shield if you've got a sticker tag to cover that up in addition to your RV toll pass. When you're not using your RV toll pass, you just put it in the, the little silver bag and keep it in the glove box or wherever you want to keep it, and it won't be read and, and your existing transponder sticker tag will be, be read. So you're just throwing your easy pass in the glove box won't necessarily keep it from being read. You have to put it in the bag. You have to put it in the bag. Don't throw away the bag for your RV toll pass. Yeah, it has to be in the bag. Otherwise, it could get it could get read out of the glove box. And uh, yeah, you, you don't want to get a double bill. That's that defeats the purpose of the whole, whole program. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's very cool. I'm glad that you guys thought of that. I didn't even think of something like that happening. But yeah, that's a that's a good point. If you already have a system, and then you purchase yes. this. Yeah, I didn't even think about it that way. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's thing, real important. <laughs> I will say the thing that interests me the most is that when you're traveling, you just never know where a toll booth is and where it's not and what state. Uh, my wife and I have had this happen. We we actually are one of these people that have three transponders up on our windshield because of this. There you go. But when you're traveling and you don't know if there's a toll booth and then you get on a road that is a toll road and they don't have the person there and now you go through yeah. the, the area and now they're given you a fine and it's hard. Yes. It's a terrible experience. I know. And this takes care of all that. And, you know, that's the same with a rental car. You should, you're driving. Uh, I've done that in Vancouver, uh, BC. You go on this bridge, a toll bridge. Well, how do I pay the toll? Well, you get to pay it. All right. You get the bill a month later <laughs> and, you, and it's got a little extra fee on it. So yes, that's why I say the RV toll pass really probably the main factor with it is not the, not the, price or anything else. It's the convenience and, and sort of the, the ability to, uh, with confidence, approach a tolling situation and just say, I can just go through and I don't have to worry about stopping, getting extra charges. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It is a big deal. And it's a big deal if you don't know what to do as you approach that tolling area, because as, as we said earlier, it can be congested or it can be a huge line. You, you maybe have to maneuver over several lanes of traffic to, to pull over in there. This takes all that worry out. Yeah, I like this a lot, Don. You you're you're you quickly sold me on this idea because I I I'm in my mind, I've I've already thought of two times that this has happened. Once I believe it was Ohio and once it was in Chicago, once was with a rental car and once was in our RV. Both times were just equally as stressful, but I will say it's more stressful in the RV because of the size of the vehicles. Right. We actually had to figure out how to get off the toll road with our RV, make sure that we were able to make all the clearances. I don't want that yeah. to happen again. Yeah. Did you, did you, did you keep your mirrors? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you able to preserve them? I did. Uh, I, I, I do know that I did scrape. I know you earlier you said that uh, people have lost them. I have scraped my mirrors, but I have never lost one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I actually, I, I, I knocked off one of my stanchions for my, for my, uh, my awning when I first got my RV. Oh, wow. <laughs> You know, sheet metal screws, put it back on. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> it was like, okay. Yeah. My wife uh, said, don't go, don't be careful. Oh, I can do that. No problem. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah can, that goes, guys. <laughs> can you talk a little bit about the billing again? I might have missed it. Maybe you already said it. With the RV toll pass, are you preloading your account or are you just being billed at the end of every month when you're when you're using it? Yeah. When you when you sign up. With Best Pass, uh, you have to put down. You have to have a fifty dollars deposit, and when it when it when the account drops uh, below uh, twenty five dollars, they'll refill it. And it's, okay. you know, it's it, but it's on a credit card. Uh, I don't know if they if they would even accept a cash deposit. It's on a credit card. So, but that's typical. I mean, any 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 toll authority you sign up for, right? You're going to uh, yep. you have to put a deposit down. So this is a one time deposit that covers the whole whole U S. Uh, so you sign up with them and they have other terms and conditions. Uh, I won't go into those. You'll see those before you, you sign up. They're pretty standard compared to any other toll agency that you sign up for. And that's it. So you get an, it's an automated account. So you have it uh, on your PC or your laptop. You can look anytime and see what, what the uh, tolling activity is. Uh, sometimes there's a lag in the bills coming in, but it's going to be pretty current for you. 
and uh, you're going to get a bill once a month for your tolls uh, plus the 1499 service charge. So it's pretty clean, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to manage. Yeah, it sounds very simple. I like it. I always like simple. Sean knows that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all like that. That's good. That's and good. then you said there's a few different types, I guess, based on axles. There's three versions of RV toll pass. So if you have a class B or C, a, a two axle RV, you'll buy that version of, of the RV toll pass. Then there's one for three axles for class A's. And then there's a third version for uh, tow vehicles. So that will accommodate pretty much any situation you're going to come across with a, a tolling situation because the toll agencies use automatic axle counting to bill. So they'll up bill you if you're towing a trailer. If you're not towing a trailer, no issue. Of course, if you're driving a, a three axle RV, that's pretty straightforward. They're going to count those and, and, and bill you accordingly. That, that's pretty simple. And that those three versions cover literally, you know, 99.99% of all the, the RV possibilities. And it's pretty clear when you're ordering it, which one to choose, yes. I guess. Yes. Well, MH2, Motorhome 2 is a two axle and it's, it's, on, our, it's on our website. It's very clear. <clears throat> MH3 is a three axle, class A. And then, <clears throat> then TR2 is the, uh, for a tow vehicle. And okay. that encompasses all, it's primarily two axle, but it'll encompass any type of tow vehicle, dualies, pickups, SUVs, and that sort of thing. For me, Don, I am a two axle class A towing uh, tow car. I would just be the two axle motorhome then, right? You do a two axle motorhome. And then if you're towing your car, you'll be automatically billed through axle counting for the extra vehicle that goes through the tolling. Do not include your a vehicle you're towing behind, a trailer or a car. You're only paying for the, uh, the RV toll pass aspect. The tolling agency will up toll you if you're towing anything behind your RV. Okay, but you register your license plate for both vehicles, the motorhome plus the tow vehicle? Yes, yes. Okay. So you don't register, you don't register, the trailer doesn't be, get registered though. If you're towing a trailer, you just register your tow vehicle and, and the oh, trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I want to make that clear. You, you, yeah. you don't put it on the trailer, you, you just put it on your tow vehicle. That's what I'm saying. If you drop your trailer off and you're driving around locally, like, like you did with your RV, You'll be able to use, uh, if you're in Florida, you can't leave your driveway without getting towed. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> so you could just drive around and, and if you have to go on a toll road to get to the store or, or go somewhere, you'll just get charged the uh, standard tolling rate and you won't get any upcharges or any. And then the toll transponder itself, are they different prices based on the, the model number? They're all the same. Price is $94.95 for the transponder. It's fourteen ninety nine for the monthly service. Okay. How how did you guys know that there would be a system that could talk to all these other systems? Like, has this been in development for a very long time, or I mean, just because? I guess because of your background, you knew. But how, how did you know that this was going to work? <laughs> oh, well, Trans, uh, Transcor has been in the tolling business for a long time, and our engineering center in Albuquerque, we we do design as well as manufacturing, and so this. This transponder is actually a version of what we call the National Pass Transponder. And because there isn't interoperability between all the tolling agencies, we said, well, maybe there's a market for something, one device that gives you interoperability without having formal interoperability between them. So we created the National Pass Transponder, multi-protocol transponder, and now we're using it for the RV industry. So it was designed by us. It's unique. Nobody else has uh, this type of multi-protocol transponder. It's just something that we design, and it's a Transcore uh, product and, and Transcore idea to overcome this uh, interoperability issue. It's good for you guys at Transcore, but I'm wondering why the difference in protocols across the nation? Why can't there be like one national standard protocol for all tolling? That's a good question. <laughs> I can't answer that. <laughs> the tolling industry has grown up over the years. It just, it, there's a, a matter of California has a, a one standard, Easy Pass has another. It, it's just how these agencies have grown up and how they've developed their individual technologies. And there's no other explanation. It's just how, it's just how the industry has grown. And once you put in all that infrastructure, of course, with a, with a certain protocol, 
it's just very difficult to change it. It's a huge expense. So yeah. the industry's just grown up that way. There is, a, there is a push for interoperability. There has been for years, but they're not there yet. So we sort of help overcome that with a transponder like Army told us. I have to say the tolling aspect, besides internet connection, the tolling is it probably in my top four or five frustrations of RVing because you either end up with, well, you used to before this great product, you used to have four or five transponders that you'd have to figure out which one was going to work. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and then you're subject to double billing. If you don't take them down, you don't manage them. You're going to get bills from all those agencies. Somebody's got to handle those. It, it just, yeah, this overcomes a lot of issues. It's a, it's a natural market for multi-protocol transponder. Absolutely. I wanted to go back real quick too, Don, with uh, Newmar, and they're they're going to have the system in their uh, motorhomes. When will we see that in their motorhomes? Is it going to be part of their 2020 rollout or their 2021 rollout? Mm, it's in their it's in their motorhomes now. That oh, okay. That they're rolling out. So it's an option, right? So it's in there, and uh, you have it in your owner's package, there's instructions on how to activate it. You don't have to activate it, but it's, 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 it comes as a, uh, as an OEM feature in, in their motorhomes, but they're in their motorhomes now. They, they've been uh, deploying these in their motorhomes for almost a year now. Yeah. I'm kind of jealous that these uh, new Mar owners, the new owners of a new Mar, uh, <laughs> that they, that they'll never have the frustration that we've had all these years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm very well, jealous of that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they won't even know how easy they have it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know. Well, I guess you pay for all those big class A's of, from Newmar. It, it's a nice little feature to have. And I mean, it's, it's, it is, it is a very nice convenient feature, not only for someone buying a, a several hundred thousand dollar RV, it's for any, anybody that's going interagency and is going to be out there traveling across especially the East coast and the Southern tier, they're just a lot of toll roads. I mean, uh, as you guys know. Yeah. We run into them all over. I, I don't yeah. even think it's really, it is definitely, you know, a lot in Florida. There's a lot in, in Philly, but yeah, we've hit toll roads through Texas and Ohio and sure. yeah. Kansas, Oklahoma, yeah, Colorado, Oklahoma, yeah, Washington yeah. state, California. Yeah. So, uh, and, and then they're growing too, because it's a means of financing uh, the roadway infrastructure. You're seeing more and more toll roads popping up. Now, Kenny travels to Canada a couple times a year. Do they use different protocols up in Canada? They do use different protocols. And they're also, the, the main toll road in Canada is the 407 electronic toll road in Toronto. There are others, but they have a law that says if you have a vehicle over 5,000 kilograms, that you have to have a special transponder. It's a yellow and it has to be placed in a certain position in the vehicle. So by law, it makes it very difficult, even if we were able to accommodate their protocols, to operate in Canada. So RV toll pass does not work in Canada. However, if you're Canadian and you're traveling to the US, you might want to consider putting RV toll pass on your vehicle. Yeah, there's a lot of Canadians that travel south. Yeah, yeah, a lot of snowbirds. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it doesn't work in Canada, maybe someday, but uh, Right now, Canadians can certainly use it in the U.S. and sign up for the program. On your website, listeners can purchase the RV Toll Pass. Probably by the time this airs, it can also be purchased from Amazon. But on your website is the main spot for all the information as far as registering with Best Way and Best Pass. Best, Best Pass. Pass. I'm sorry. Yeah. Registering yeah. with Best Pass and all the information related to RV toll pass. Yes, I think everything you need to know is there. There is a, there is a link to a, our sales line. And if somebody has a question that, that is not answered on, on the website, they can go ahead and, and uh, send an email to actually one of my guys, one of my sales guys, and we'll get back to them on that. But we have FAQs. We have a, a lot of information on on the device and how it's used and how to register. And we've tried to come up with everything that we could think of that a customer might ask. But we still do get questions from time to time that come in via the, the sales uh, question hotline. And we're pretty much able to accommodate those personally. 
So when somebody's planning taking an extended trip or going actually just outside of their area, uh -huh. how far in advance do they need to consider ordering the toll pass and so they can get everything in place and the uh, account set up before they travel? I would give it... Uh... I'd give it two to three weeks. I, I, you, you have to plan ahead because you, you've got to order the transponder. You have to get it. Then you have to set up your account. So the, the, the process of actually getting a transponder in your hand is probably the, the slowest piece of it because it has to come in the mail. Or I, I don't know how Wesco delivers it. Maybe it comes via UPS. But So I, I'd give it at least two weeks, maybe three. Give yourself some lead time to get, get set up. And then once you have it, let's say... I don't use it for three months. Do I have to go back on the website and reactivate it when no. I'm going to use it? Okay, that's automatic. Once you sign up, uh, the billing's automatic. If you, if, if you incur a toll, you'll get billed uh, for the service fee and the toll. If you don't, uh, nothing happens. You just, you just have it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So there's no turning on, turning off your activation. No. As you're, oh, that's great. No, you know, you can move it from vehicle to vehicle too. I mean, if you register your a vehicle you've got behind your RV, that's one thing. But uh, say you buy a new RV, you can just go into your into the website and register your new RV if you got a different license plate number or, or uh, anything like that. The system's flexible in that regard. I got another question for you, Don, because we do also have a lot of people in the RV industry that listen to the show. We, we always like to ask, what type of marketing have you guys been using and what have you found to be working the best, whether that be Facebook ads or YouTube videos or, or whatever that may be? Well, we have, every month we have a social media campaign, which we find to be good. We have a Carol Strategies out of Albuquerque as our PR firm, and they've reached out to the various RV publications. We've actually had uh, articles put in RV Life and some other, other publications. I can't say that any one outlet or type of media is the best because it's a small community, right? You guys appreciate that. Yeah. So we feel that if we hit the key periodicals and we're on social media and, and you guys, of course, are part of that, the word's going to get out, I think, probably to the entire community one way or the other. Fortunately, it's a small community and we're hoping that uh, working with guys like you and uh, through these other other means that uh, the word's going to get out pretty thoroughly throughout the uh, through the RV community. Yeah, I think this will spread very quickly. Actually, I think once more people become aware of it, I think this is something that other RVers will share with each other because of that frustration. We've all had the same frustration of traveling across the country, and yes. we know and people will relate to this uh, so quickly. Be like, oh, I wish I knew about this sooner. It's the first thing I said when when I found about that. I find when I found out about this, I said, "Oh, I wish I knew about this sooner." By the time you pay for five or six transponders, you could have bought this one transponder. Oh yeah, that's right. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's just it. Yeah. One, and, you know, four less things to keep track of. And if you or your wife is handling all the billing for that, and then they're tearing their hair out because you're getting all these different bills, and then you're trying to figure, well, what? This is not a legitimate charge. Now, what do I do? to uh, counter it, you just give up and you just pay it. So yeah, it, it has a lot of positive aspects that uh, can only be appreciated by someone who's actually experienced having to travel interagency on, on the toll roads. It yeah. absolutely does. And I, I, I appreciate the fact you guys see that so clearly because you've been there, you've been yeah, there, yeah. you've experienced it. Yes, indeed. Before we let you go, Don, is there anything we might have missed or that you want to add that you want to discuss? No, I think we've covered pretty much everything. If, if you have other questions, you, you guys can touch base with me. But yeah, rvtollpass.com, uh, that, that's the main go-to spot. Uh, Amazon after that. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much, Don. Yeah. Hey, it's been a pleasure. And, and like I say, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get back to me. And uh, good luck. Hope you get on the road again. Hope you guys uh, get an RV toll pass and enjoy the, the features that it has. We want to thank Don for coming on the show and informing us all about RV toll pass. When Sabrina and I first started traveling across the country, toll booths were one of our biggest headaches, and we wished someone could combine all these passes together. Well, wish granted. This is going to save time, confusion, and headaches for all of us. 
and will be more important than ever with the toll industry moving towards going completely cashless. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Take care and safe travels, everyone. This episode is brought to you by Battleborn Batteries, the best name in the RV and marine industry. These lithium batteries are designed and assembled in the USA, backed by a 10-year warranty. The best solution for your battery anxiety. So go check them out at battlebornbatteries.com.